was kind of cool. And How long did it take you to put that chapbook this one, together? Um, the chapbook didn't take any time because basically Bryce was like, I want to publish your poems, and I gave him a whole bunch of my stuff, and he picked these out. Oh, um, so he put them in the order that they're in in yeah. that book and everything. Mm -hmm. And where did he hear about... So, so you read um, well, it let's see, in 96, uh, I sent some writing in to the Guadalupe Culture Arts Center and I was uh, accepted to a workshop taught by Sandra and Bryce was the reader. So that's how I met him and so I did a couple workshops with Sandra. She, she told me to go to graduate school, I went to graduate school um, and then came back here and it, I traveled all over, and that's when I wrote these. Basically, is like when I was traveling, and I was like really trying to discover words and images for myself. And um, so, when you work on a poem, how do you revise and revise and revise, or is it pretty much spontaneous? This actually, there well, yeah, two completely different um, efforts. This one, um, I would, I, I can say for sure that there was no idea of the poem before I sat down to write it. Everything was impulsed based on image or feeling. Um, I had a pretty standard practice of daily going to writing poems. Um, so they were all inspired of the moment and actually uh, I had no editing on these. Um, I pretty much asked that, that be part of publishing, like I didn't want to change anything. Um, so these are pretty much the rawest things I've ever written, and they're the, the first series of poems. And that was published in what year? This was 2006, but these were written from 1998 to, uh, or, yeah, 98 to about 2001. Um, and so the process of putting these poems together in, um, some was, will play the cello. Yeah, very different process. This was five years. This was from now until about 2004 or 5 when I came back to San Antonio. And um, I just really wanted to look very intensely at this place and everybody that belongs to it, including me and what it all means. So my focus, instead of these, which are, you know, a little moment here, a little moment there, you know, these are, are extremely focused. And they all hinge around that. This. Um, not only community voice, um, but my voice and who I am in that, um, to flesh it out. Uh, one of the important things that I really wanted to get in this book was just the incredible diversity um, that it is here in San Antonio without talking about it in a racial context. There's no mention of race or color or any kind of that type of stuff in this book. It's all done with um, uh, with scene and uh, dialogue. So the dialogue actually informs someone of where this person could be from. But the interesting thing about it is actually what it does is it, it's a blank picture, but the reader brings their own stereotypes to the reading. So they're forced to engage their own stereotypes because it's never informed within the text. So that was the, the main idea for this one. Can you read a couple of poems from your first chapter? Yeah. Um, and these are all very short poems um, and you know they're just little nuggets. Um, definitely they were inspired by um, Spanish surrealists and some of the work of Robert Bly and uh, some of the Dolly Canal. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do this one. This is about my grandmother, Gravel Washer, Kentucky. And I went through Kentucky and I was just looking at the landscape and I just thought, wow, about the only job you could get here is maybe washing some gravel. <laughs> uh, descending into the fallow tobacco heart of my ancestors, no slaves, only hands, thick knuckled. Ten burrowing grub worms, brothers and sisters all rhyming. Dying barns, the last crumbling sanctuaries. So my grandmother, her name was Alita, and her sisters were Manita, Talita, and Felita. <laughs> all right, one of ten. Um, let's see. 
This one is a important one, I think. Um, if I can find it real quick. And this book kind of is outside of what's happening in the world, and that's why this one was important because so so many things were happening in the world that I just couldn't ignore it anymore. Um, I had to engage, you know, two wars and terrorism and our civil rights disappearing, you know. Okay, step four, the enlightening footwork of levitation. And this is for Leslie Martin Silco. Uh, mountains mantra, call me into being. Snake dance, dream me alive. How might one inspire dirty trees, echoing names, exiled deserts, and giving plains? Estimating, surely disenfranchised without tools, he serves stone soul, tears, wet stone, a fantasy of density. Swords ascend to sun, consumed and shattered, mouth of rivers and a gnat wing. Beholden to no one, unless the two meet with equanimity and peace. When we think a past that cross, do not rely on the feet which brought you headlong, headstrong, are we then soaring? Even birds rest, recuperate, leave body on the ground. Fear of flying is fear of flying. Um, and then I'll just do the little cute one to end it. New West. <clears throat> and th this came from driving uh, through New Mexico and seeing a cat, like this old man, and he was uh, closing his gate, you know, and he was, you know, when you work so long close your legs anymore. So that was the image for this. And it says, uh, wide spiritual country, moving is standing still, days disappear. A piece the soul sacrifices before moving onward in distance. People get lost here. Why do you think there are mobile homes where the buffalo once roamed? Old man cowboy, a rocking horse, who would have thought to watch him walk? back and forth. Thanks.